the things I wanted to discuss, the main focus of this uh, session was because uh, this will become a very huge session. So I split this MDB explanation into two parts. Uh, I will let you know when the architecture comes. Uh, let me first tell you about a, a, bit, a bit about the InnoDB engine. Uh, the InnoDB engine, it's a asset compliance uh, database. Uh, okay, now what does mean by asset? Uh, what is asset? Uh, asset is like for A, it's called atomicity. For C, it's called consistency. For I, it's isolation. For D, it's durability. Atomicity means that commit statement, roadblock statement, and any operational data from information schema table, it should be like uh, atomic. Atomic means that if you do the commit, all the data should commit. Nothing should be remaining, and if you roll back, nothing should be remaining. Everything, every whole statement, the whole transaction should be rolled back. So we don't want any data to be inserted in some tables, and like the data should be consistent for atomicity. Consistency uh, is the same, like uh, mainly involves internal InnoDB processing to protect data from crashes like uh, InnoDB crash recovery and uh, if once the database comes back uh, the data should be consistent uh, it should not uh, the data should not be inconsistent so that is consistency isolation level isolation is like we have different isolation level but we will go uh, once uh, into isolation later on we have around four isolation level we have like uncommitted and committed and uh, serializable and one more is there I don't remember the name for that so isolation is like we have every transaction like different user will be uh, running different transaction then every transaction should be isolated from each other so that is isolation you can set different uh, level of isolation as well durability the data should be durable uh, the durability aspect of asset model involves mysql software feature interacting with your particular hardware configuration because of many possibilities depending on the capabilities of your cpu network storage devices this aspect is the most complicated to provide concrete guidelines like in will double write buffer uh, turn on and turn off take any configuration you do on your MySQL server which is related to your hardware that should be uh, both should be working and like if you want to use any multiple threads and you define that on the MySQL uh, server uh, at the setting level at the configuration level then those configuration should be if effective or at the hardware level as well and hardware should be uh, res should respond to your uh, settings which you have set next is uh, multi versioning like what is multi versioning multi versioning uh, what MySQL database keeps the information about old version of changes uh, change rows old version of change road and suppose the transactional feature such as concurrency and rollback a rollback segment of InnoDB storage area that contains the undo log InnoDB can respond to queries for multiple version of the same row when those queries are a part of transaction that started at different times it uses a part of undo log the update undo buffer to build the earlier version of database rows simply in simple words multi versioning is about the undo and the redo like if one session is using uh, updating the data and the other one to select the other one will be provided from the undo and if this guy commit then after that it the data will be provided from the redo and after once the uh, the buffer insert the data into the table uh, into the data file the data should be provided from the data files so the multi version is provided like if i want to roll back the data should come from undo and the old data should be again 
uh, roll back to the data files so this is all about this uh, multi versioning okay uh, then obviously foreign key is, is avail available uh, this is a row level locking automatic crash recovery in mysql uh, if goes down we have uh, redo log redo logs and when it comes back it can recover from the redo logs and the crash is automatically uh, in table space level we have multiple data files uh, and all the objects if which has cached from the data files, uh, which has cached from the disk, are stored at uh, log buffer. Uh, you can use any uh, shared file to store object. Like we have, it creates a single file for the table where the data and the indexes are stored. Okay. Uh, okay. So the physical data and build logical structure we have blocks and rows uh, at the physical level mm, and yes optimization is very high um, tables are secure in mysql at this level uh, now if i talk about the InnoDB architecture then this structure is divided into two segments one is the InnoDB memory structure and the second is InnoDB disk structure okay today we will be discussing only and only the InnoDB in memory structure this one because it's not easy the in memory structure is, is because we will be discussing the buffer the adoptive hash indexes the chain buffer and the log buffer how these things works and how the data is sent to this on disk files which are different like we have table spaces uh, we have uh, how the files are created, how the data files work. We have general table spaces, we have uh, double writer files, buffer files, and we have undo table spaces, uh, we have uh, temporary table spaces, we have redo logs as well from the log buffer where the data is written. And these are the things we will be discussing. And one more thing uh, is that just like we talked about. Uh, here in my ism that uh, where is it just a minute this line row storage format uh, some just like that uh, we have row storing format in in odb as well which i think is i haven't mentioned here but we have in odb file format uh, one is uh, antelope and the antelope and the other is barracuda by default it's uh, the row file format is barracuda uh, which supports the dynamic and uh, compress but does not support the fixed file the fixed file is supported by the antelope and which is not used by default uh, by default barracuda is used which supports uh, this uh, what do you say compress and dynamic file format and I think which should be used so this is what I want to, to know that we have this file format in InnoDB as well so talking about this uh, buffer pool yes uh, we have buffer pool and we have uh, like buffer pool we have change buffer we have log buffer and we have adaptive hash indexes this is the in memory structure of your uh, InnoDB storage engine okay so what does uh, the buffer pool have uh, obviously it's a buffer cache for your InnoDB what it does that uh, it cache the data from your uh, disk to the memory and if you have a dedicated server then you should be using up you can be used up to 80 percent but you should start from 50 then you should go to 60 you should go to 70 percent of the ram available and then that you can allocate to your uh, buffer pool size the variable which is used is this this InnoDB buffer pool size from this you can uh, tell them that what should be your InnoDB buffer pool size uh, I have example at the end uh, which can show uh, how much the buffer pool size you should give and this buffer pool size is shared along all the session because this is a global variable 
so once I say this is a global variable then this means that uh, this is shared along all the session every session will be using this buffer pool for their uh, caching their data or for selecting their data uh, NODB use uh, LRU the least recently used uh, page displacement we use pages uh, you can refer this to the block uh, page have its own size uh, by default I don't I think 16 kb or something uh, like that like how much should be the block size or we can say what should be the page size at the uh, level of the your inside this uh, buffer pool okay uh, so if the data is uh, is used uh, recently used it will become in the top and if the data is uh, not used then it will be uh, evicted it will be removed from the buffer pool uh, by the time depends on the usage of the data okay what should be the NODB buffer pool size it should be like buffer pool size must always be equal or multiple of NODB buffer pool chunk size and NODB buffer pool instances once you multiply these two it should be the multiple of NODB buffer pool size if it is not multiple of these two or MySQL will set it according to itself and it will be multiple of this like if you set 8 GB of NODB buffer pool size then it will be 8 GB if you <laughs> set it 9 GB then obviously uh, depends on this one and these two configuration and if 9 is not multiple of these two variables then it will set it to 10 so or any other variable which is the multiple of this I will show you uh, the multiple and how the multiple uh, variable what I'm why I'm saying this but let's discuss this how the LRU work in the buffer pool okay so if you divide this buffer cache LRU linked list into eight parts five out of eight uh, is given to the head and three out of eight is given to the tail and tail will have it's called the old sublist and this is the new sublist where the old data uh, is here which is removed from this area by the time and the new data is the new data is here and once uh, any new data is coming it will comes into here from the mid the new data will come from the mid and it will goes it all do the uh, changes by the time depends if the data is required it would go from this level or it will go directly from here so it's not that the data when data is inserted it will come directly from here because my sequel use the double link list it has pointer to the previous link and this uh, and the pointer to the second links and it can change the links as well as well uh, so the data is uh, if the block if the page is accessed frequently then it will go uh, to the top if the page is uh, not accessed frequently then it will come down to this one okay so uh, let's discuss like uh, I will I can show you this uh, yeah now if we uh, want to do the how you can do the buffer pool configuration um, I told you that you can configure your this NODB buffer full size as a dynamic uh, you can change this at runtime but if you want to make this permanent uh, you should do the entry at your configuration file as well uh, just let me show you here what I meant by the configuration file uh, exit because this file this etc and my CNF, this is the heart of your this is your p file or sp file just like oracle there the data it should keep the data and we there you should when my sql start it takes all uh, I, if it is not by default then if you have changed any data it will take from here so any changes you do it should come here if it's not here if the entry is not here then once uh, you restart the database like if here i will change the size of the buffer pool size 
then if i restart it will get back to its uh, default size because uh, it's dynamic uh, uh, and it's a global variable you need to uh, make the changes in your uh, what do you say at the global level uh, at the configuration file as well okay but if you change the size and you do the entry inside your uh, configuration file and you, you restart it so it will take the information from there and it will be changed so what I am here I wanted to tell you that if you have a 4 GB of RAM you should go with 1 or 2 GB uh, like if you play 16 you should go with 10 or 12 this is in the case where you have a dedicated server like you have a server which is totally for your um, MySQL and there is no, nothing else running if there is something else running then you should give like 50% and then monitor your buffer pool like uh, check if your buffer pool hit ratio is 100% 90% or if it's not 100% it should be 100% if it's not 100% then gradually increase your uh, buffer pool size uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to tell you that how you can check your uh, buffer pool hit ratio uh, we will check that in there are a lot of things to consider while doing your performance tuning that is the part of the performance tuning but initially you can give like you can go till 80 percent if you are using a dedicated server okay so this is how you should do the configuration okay uh, yes uh, what i was talking about here this buffer pool chunk size and nodb buffer pool size this is here what i mean nodb buffer pools instances okay now what is uh, buffer pool instances uh, the buffer pool instances use like you can divide the total buffer pool into separate uh, buffer pools like if you have 8 gb ram then you tell them that i want to have around 8 more buffer pools instances so you set this value in a db buffer pool instances to 8 and it will provide 1 1 gb to each instance and it will work like multi-thread so like if too many connections coming then they will use uh, this instances and it will be like uh, handled very frequently but uh, the InnoDB buffer pool instance should be only used if you have uh, the buffer pool size is equal to 1 GB or it's uh, greater than 1 GB only then it can be used and it's not that if you have 1 GB then you should use uh, the InnoDB in buffer pool instance equal to 5 or 6 or 8 you have to think on it uh, it should be like if you have 1 GB then you can use 2 so it will divide it into 500 and 500 uh, 512 MB, 512 MB, and uh, it can be used. So, what, what actually I want to mean is like when InnoDB buffer pool is large, many data requests uh, can be satisfied by retrieving from memory. So, you might encounter bottlenecks from the multiple threads trying to access the buffer pool at once. Like, just as I told you, like many bu uh, multiple threads want to access to the buffer pool. So, it can be contagious it can be like a uh, catastrophic situation like we have only one buffer pool and so many uh, multi threads are coming and they are accessing the buffer pool and it might not uh, be able to entertain that so you can enable multiple buffer pools to minimize this contention okay uh, so each page is uh, that is stored in or pages are blocks what i mean to us if any block is stored in this buffer pool or any block is retrieved so uh, it will be assigned to one of the buffer pool randomly like if we i told you that i have like 64 and the buffer pool instance is 32 and so every uh, buffer pool will have 2 gb and so any uh, pages is inserted or retrieved it would be uh, assigned to each of these 32 instances randomly so if any uh, threads come and you want to fetch the data uh, it can uh, the data can be provided from one of this uh, buffer pool so yes still uh, every buffer pool will work on its own LRU 
so every month 32 of 32 like I have in this case that I am mentioning to 32 so I have 32 instances and any everyone will have its own LRU queue and it will work on this behavior then we have chunk size okay so why do you need uh, the chunk size the chunk size is responsible like if you like you have 2 GB of buffer pool and if any changing is happening then it will the changes will be done on the chunk sizes by default it's 128 MB so the data is uh, changed on the base of this chunk size like 120 at one time the data will be changed of the size of 128 MB so yes uh, uh, this is how it will be helpful for you that how much uh, you should change the data like uh, if, uh, let's say if this time you want to know it's uh, what is the size of this if I want to know my SQL from if you want to execute any query uh, from the shell this is how you can select my SQL minus E and I want to select this NODB buffer pool instances okay uh, so this is how it will work if you see I have uh, instance is equal to 1 by default it's 1 okay and I want to select another thing uh, which I mentioned here is chunk size okay uh, sorry. and here I needed to be introduced this is in bytes if i divide this in bytes uh, let's say divided this by 1024 again divided by 1024 this will comes in mb something like this 128 mb are uh, like this so this is how the buffer pool chunk size is by default it's 120 it must be like that uh, if i divide this one this view I think I'm doing something wrong here. That's why the AB is not coming. Okay, correct. If I do it here, divide by one two four. Again, divide by. Yeah, you see that it's okay. I, I what I did here is problem is <laughs> two four. Now it's one twenty eight MB. So, and one more thing I want to show you now is that. Uh, buffer pool size that what is my current buffer pool size again uh, okay so my buffer pool size is 128 and you can see that uh, if I divide if I multiple this is the multiple of my nodb buffer pool instance and my nodb buffer pool chunk size so my nodb buffer pool size is 128 and we have nodb buffer pool instance is equal to 1 this one is 1 and this one is 128 so this is the 128 is a multiple of 128 and if i want to set uh, change the value of uh, buffer pool size uh, then uh, i can do this by uh, set global variable and set global uh, variable and this this value in a number of size equal to you can change that so but uh, the question here is that it should be uh, a multiple of your MySQL uh, these two it should be multiple of uh, this MySQL buffer full chunk size and MySQL buffer full instance now if you want to change this size let's suppose set uh, as I told you that this is a global variable global size equal to uh, let's say I want to set it to uh, what could be the let's say what is the multiple of uh, 128 okay because we have the chunk size is 128 so let's say if I want to search on Google and I want to say a multiple of uh, 128 okay okay uh, as you can see that uh, we have this is uh, 126 is a multiple of 
256 is a multiple of 128 okay you can see that 256 256 is a multiple of 128 and if i want to set to, let's suppose I, uh, 264 is not the multiple okay but i want to change it uh, what i'm doing is i'm giving the size in the bytes so if you are uh, doing it from uh, the command prompt uh, you will have to provide the size into the bytes uh, like if say if i am 264 into uh, 1024 it's kilobyte and if again multiply it to this this will be mb so i am this is the total mbs i am giving it to it okay so now if you see the size has been changed and it is 264 mb remember it 264 mb but when i uh, do is select this is 384 you check that I provided 264 MB but it's changed the size to 384 MB why is that because as I told you that it should be the multiple of whatever is the size of buffer pool stack it should be the multiple of NODB buffer pool chunk size into NODB buffer pool instance size and that is 128 and 128 uh, 384 is not the multiple of 120 uh, sorry 264 is not the multiple of 128 you see okay you, now you, you check that 384 is a multiple of 128 and what did this is here it changed it to 384 MB because it's the multiple of 128 and I set it to 64 so it automatically set it to 384 because it should be uh, the multiple of 384 why my does this just because it doing it to tell you that uh, to provide the exact type of chunk to this my uh, buffer pool size yeah and this is the memory so if you do not set this nodb buffer pool dump at shutdown and load at startup uh, everything in your buffer pool will be lost so if you want you, when you want to restart uh, you should mention these two so that uh, the NODB buffer pool can uh, dump all the data at the shutdown and then it load all the data at the startup to the buffer pool we have the change buffer as well uh, the change buffer uh, is used for what do you say uh, it's a type of NODB index that is a subset of table columns uh, NODB table can have 0 1 or any more secondary indexes uh, as per its requirements uh, secondary index can be used to satisfy queries that only requires uh, values from the index column like what happened is why is this used uh, why is this uh, change buffer is used like if any changes is happening to uh, secondary indexes and uh, the change which happened uh, like mean if that block where the second day index result and that block is not been provided in the buffer pool then this change buffer uh, its change buffer uh, save the changes and caches that changes to itself so when the page is available when the page is available in this block area uh, in the buffer pool area where this change will this change buffer will sync uh, the cache buffer uh, which it have to the buffer pool uh, so uh, the buffer pool cannot do the hard work which it will like should not uh, do the hard work to get the uh, changes from the disk and take it to the buffer pool uh, change buffer okay so variable use for this is uh, nodp change buffer uh, if I show you it also saves a file at the disk level as well uh, dot dot. Oh, oh bro. you see this uh, we have this one nodb buffer pool file this is a change buffer it all also saves the file change buffer also save a file at the storage level as well so uh, if any crash happen or if you restart uh, uh, 
the MySQL server. All the changes happen in uh, at indexes are stay persistent, stay consistent. Uh, because when it comes back, uh, it will bring the changes from the this file to the change buffer cache. So yes, uh, this was about the buffer cache. As you see this, uh, what it does at if the page is when the page is available here, you can see that it sync the data from this change buffer to this, and once uh, the data is synced, all the changes is part from the buffer pool. If it's not used to and any checkpoint happen or the buffer pool is uh, wants to add more data, then the old data will be. Uh, sent to this disk level. We have adoptive hash indexes. Okay, uh, what is this? Uh, hash indexes is used. Uh, hash indexes is used for like uh, what do you say? If a table does not fits the whole table is does not fix in the memory, then let me show you from here. This is where the adaptive hash index is, is used this this part okay I'm talking about this part okay here so a hash index can speed up the query by enabling direct lookup of element uh, turning the index value into a sort of pointer NODB has mechanism that monitors index searches if NODB notice that queries could be benefit from building a hash index it does so automatically what happened is if the whole data cannot be uh, stored in this NODP buffer pool, then it create a hash indexes to the data at the disk level, and uh, and the hash indexes are stored in this buffer pool. And if the query comes and it's want to use that whole chunk of data, so it will use this adoptive hash indexes and it will be very fast to get the data from the disk using this adoptive hash indexes stored in the buffer pool as the main as, the, as this name says that it's adoptive hash indexes so if the data is not uh, required then again uh, then these uh, hash indexes will be updated and it will uh, it will lose all this uh, data here I think uh, if I have the query I can show you the adaptive hash indexes okay we will leave that so the variable uh, which is uh, that is uh, adaptive hash indexes uh, which is used which from here you can enable the adaptive hash indexes by default a uh, few of the adaptive hash indexes is enabled uh, let me check that I will Okay, sorry. Just a We have a table where we can from where we can check this. Uh, I forgot the table name. If I have information, you know, DB indexes. Uh, my SQL. Let me tell you. Select scale from. Uh, you have information. Everything. Most of the information uh, data is like available inside the information schema. And if I tell him the NODB for matrices. In for nation matrices. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know what's happening. What am I doing? Oh, matrix. So this is the table from where you can check. Uh, let's say uh, I have a table where can I check its subsystem. Uh, equal to is that is adaptive hash indexes uh, adaptive hash index like if this is enabled or not I can check this 
adaptive hash index subsystem just a minute let me know copy bring the in the query uh, from my other computer yeah here it is i have to create my notes so i don't lose yeah if you see this adaptive hash for searches and adaptive hash for b tree searches are enabled by default these two are enabled by default and pages added pages removed and adaptive hash no hash entries and adaptive row updates these are not enabled by default only these two are enabled by default which are used by this so these are things which are used by default uh, uh, adaptive hashes indexes in mysql and the last thing but not the least uh, in this nodb buffer pool uh, we have the redo log buffer uh, the redo log buffer is here this one yeah this uh, log buffer this is called a redo log buffer uh, anything changes is happening uh, in uh, the buffer uh, in the NLD buffer pool are stored in this area in this log buffer and once the changes uh, are want to be reflected are stored in the redo log files at the storage level we have these two files uh, I can show you that exit this these two file IB log file 0 and IB log file 1 these two are the two files at the storage level these are the redo log files and in the memory this is the area log buffer where the st uh, this mysql store data okay uh, the variable which is used for the size like by default is a 16 mb you know db log buffer size is the 16 mb by default uh, if you have uh, any redo problem redo generation problem if redo is too high you can change this uh, you know db log buffer size uh, at the OS uh, from from the configuration file okay guys uh, this was the today's uh, session uh, how the redo log how this uh, nodb how this you know all the engines and how this nodb architecture work we have worked on the nodb uh, in memory structure only uh, next session we will discussing the table spaces how the table spaces work how this double write buffer work how the transaction how are the different isolation modes and temporary different table spaces we have what is this file per tables and all these things works in uh, nodb architecture so that's it for today uh, this was all i wanted to uh, convey today if you have any question uh, you can ask me now otherwise we can end the session